Hey, it's Matthew back with the Huddle Haas, and today I'm going to be uh, showing you how I make biscuits. This, well, there's a couple ways that I like to make biscuits. This is my favorite way. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do biscuits today was because we got some bulk meat. A grocery store locally to us was selling um, bulk pork, and so we bought 10 pounds of it because it was a good price. And uh, we really like uh, sausage, sausage gravy, um, and biscuits, something that I don't make every Saturday morning, but probably two to three times a month I will make sausage gravy and biscuits for the boys. Anyway, so that's why we're going to make it. So I'm going to show you uh, how, uh, what we got and breaking things down. So we got 10 pounds of sausage that I'm going to show you, and then I got uh, 14 pounds of, of Virginia ham that we're gonna cut up and put in the freezer. And I think that's a really good tip uh, because things are so pricey. And one thing that we like to do and that I grew up doing, and I think Amy grew up doing too, was buying in bulk and then breaking it down and putting it in the freezer. And I know a lot of people don't have the freezer space. Uh, we do. And uh, so anyway, uh, we're gonna break some of this down for future meals. I should also say, uh, I've been putting a, several videos out of me cooking, and I always I want to give Amy credit. She does most of the cooking uh, in the house, but I think she's uh, probably pretty happy when I do decide to, to cook and uh, make a video because she, does, she doesn't have to cook, and I often run around and clean up the kitchen for her. And so, yeah, so she, I would say she probably cooks, honey, what would you say? 75% of the time? It varies by the week, she said, uh, but something like that. So I do enjoy cooking. I like to cook, but Amy does the majority of the cooking. So let me turn you around here and let me show you uh, what we got. Okay, so we got this uh, 10 pounds of uh, John F. Martin and Sons uh, bulk pork sausage. And uh, this is really a really good brand, John F. Martin. Uh, so anyway, 10 pounds. So let's open it up and then we're going to put it in uh, baggies and put it in the freezer. Typically, we used to go to Aldi and we would get uh, sausage for $1.49 for a pound. But recently, like it's just, it's gone up and it keeps going up every time that we go there. So uh, this was $2.80 a pound. So they're giving us two five pound packages here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take Amy's scale and I'm going to measure out a pound. Because that's typically what it takes. I put a bowl on there, I'm gonna zero it. And typically that's what it takes for a meal for us. Uh, it's about a pound or what we use. You can kind of stretch it. So I'm going to see if I can break off a pound. Let's see how close I am. Oh, that was 12 ounces. And that's 16 ounces. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our freezer bag and I'm just going to uh, put it in our bag here. Smells really good, and you can see that it's pre-seasoned. And then I'm going to leave a little air hole there, and then I'm just going to squish it flat. And this is uh, this will help for two things. One, it helps it thaw out a lot quicker because you have a bigger surface area, and it helps with stacking in the freezer. So, uh, it's not taking up so much room, but also, yeah, because it, it will, um, defrost a lot quicker. So there we go. We have one down. We're going to do, uh, 10 more. So I'll bring you back when we have this done and we start on the ham. Okay. So now we have our sausage and bags flat. I put the, uh, I just put sausage and the date 11 16 22 and then we are just going to stack these in the freezer nine of them for the freezer and then one for 
sausage, gravy, and biscuits tonight. So now, let's move on to this. This is a uh, Walnut Creek, which is a really, really good brand. I don't know if you know about them. Um, I think it's out of Ohio. I think they have some of the, um, the best lunch meat. And if you've gone to buy lunch meat recently, you know how expensive it is. And this was $2.89 a pound. And so we bought the whole thing. <clears throat> so what, sorry, I have a cough. I, I had, uh, you know, the sickness about four weeks ago and I still have a cough. Anyway, so what we thought we would do is get a whole thing and we're going to slice it up and put it in the freezer for a couple different things. Uh, we like to use this for, we don't eat a ton of pork, uh, but we do eat some. And uh, what we're going to do with this is I'm going to dice it up to use it for like beans, bean soup, uh, beans and cornbread. Amy makes a fantastic... Uh, a casserole, a breakfast casserole called scrambled egg casserole that uses this. It's my favorite, uh, probably, uh, breakfast casserole that she does. Maybe I'll convince her to, uh, do it sometime. Uh, we can use it for ham and potato casserole. Anytime you need, uh, a slice of ham or some ham, fry it up for breakfast, uh, make burritos and things like that. So we thought we would get this and have it in the freezer for when we need it. So I'm going to get this sliced up sliced and diced up so there is some juice back here so i'm just going to cut a hole up here and i'm going to drain it into the sink you couldn't really see that okay there's probably still going to be some that um, drips out of there. Get this baby opened up. And again, um, <clears throat> this is typically what you get at the deli to have it sliced up. And, uh, which we could have got it sliced, but we didn't because we wanted it for, uh, casseroles and things. So, what we're going to do, I think I need a bigger knife. <laughs> that knife is little. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have, I'm just going to cut several slices <clears throat> like this, maybe five slices about this thick um, that we can have in the freezer. Like this end will be great for uh, like putting into uh, beans for beans and cornbread. Or we really like in the winter time to have um, split pea soup. Oh, I could eat some split pea soup. I have, I do have a video of that if you want to look for that. So this would be another good recipe for that. And then others, I'm going to just slice it. Um, I'm just going to show you one here and I'm just going to dice it up so that we can have it for, you know, ham and potato casserole and things like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, when I put it in the bags, for the freezer, uh, I'm going to weigh it so we know about how much we have. So then I'm just going to dice it up here like this and this little and then put it in a Ziploc bag. So I'm going to get this cut up and I'll bring you back and show you what I got. Okay, so when I was out in the garage the other day cleaning. I found this uh, food saver. Get my coffee out of the way. I found this food saver out there, and I thought, well, what a good time to use it. And I'm just uh, figuring out, again, how to use it. So I cut my, my sleeves, and then I'm going to seal them. And you can see here, I did two cups, which that doesn't look like a whole lot. But there's two cups in here, and so this will be good for a casserole. Um, <clears throat> or uh, soup or something. Now, I did make this a little big, and again, this was this has been sitting in our garage for three, almost four years. So, uh, even though I'm just glad to be, what I'm trying to say is I'm just glad that they are being used up. So, well, that didn't work. <laughs> 
So let me try this again. Let me try this again here. I'm going to hit seal and we'll see if it if it does seal here. Okay. So let's try this again. There, we got a seal. So I'm just going to measure out here from all of, see all that I got here. I got this full, this was mostly full, and then I got several of the steaks. And so I'm just going to do uh, two cups of the ham. Because I think that's plenty for most recipes. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to put that in there. And this is going to get loud for a second. Shove this down, lock it, put it on mo moist, and vacuum and seal. So you can hear it's getting loud. And you should start to see it to suck in there. See how it okay, so we have this all ready here. So you can see what we got. I have a bowl with some extra. I thought I'd make Amy and I some salads for, like, chef salads for lunch today. But look at all of this. Like, this is a ton. Like, each one of these will be a meal. And then probably enough for leftovers. So like if we do a casserole, this will be enough for a meal and then leftovers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve of the cubes and then one, two, three, four, five of the ham slices, the ham steaks. So that is a lot of meals for us. And again, up front, it's a big price. And especially when you're buying in bulk, up front is a big price, but it saves you in the long run. Uh, it saves, again, it, it helps curb inflation because we bought this on sale. We'll have this anytime we need ham. And uh, next time we go to the store, we don't need to buy any. And we, it helps us think about what we can do for meals. So Amy and I are debt free. This is something that we've worked hard at and we continue. Hopefully it stays like that. But uh, anyway, this is one way that we manage a debt free lifestyle is buying in bulk, breaking it down. Again, uh, you know, putting it in these bags, these food saver bags I know aren't cheap, but you know, they weren't doing me no good out in the garage anyway. So um, I think I remember buying this thing no, my mom and dad got this for me for Christmas when I was single uh, for deer season when I would cut up deer. Uh, so this was a gift to me. So these were nothing. Uh, next time I go to the store, I'll have to pick some more of these up. But anyway, yeah. So let's move on to the biscuit recipe and uh, supper. So what we're going to need for our biscuits is two cups of flour, just two cups of all-purpose flour. I like to use unbleached. Six tablespoons of butter, and what I did was I just kind of made it into little chunks. Aldi is having a sale on butter. I think it's two forty-nine a pound, uh, so I've been stocking up. A half a teaspoon of baking soda. Three teaspoons of baking powder a half a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of sugar, and then one cup of buttermilk. And I'm only using buttermilk, I'm only using store-bought buttermilk typically today because I'm making the video. However, typically nine times out of 10, what I do is I just use a cup of milk, I put a tablespoon or two of vinegar in it and make my own buttermilk. So these are all the ingredients um, that's just how easy it is. Most people have this stuff on hand. Like I said, buttermilk is not something we typically have on hand. Uh, but I think this does a good job, and that's why I bought it for the video today. And what I'm going to do is mix this all in. So I'm going to, there's my flour, two cups of flour, add my soda, my baking powder, my salt. And my sugar and I'm just going to mix this up just to get everything incorporated you could sift it if you wanted to uh, 
the baking powder and baking soda was kind of powdery. It wasn't really clumpy. Uh, you know you don't want to bite into a clump of soda or powder because it can be really bitter and ruin the whole meal. But I just want to incorporate this in just a little bit. And then I'm going to take my butter and I'm just going to drop that in. Now I like one of these pastry cutters here, if you can see it. I like using these. Um, it's really, it makes it really easy. However, for years and years, we did not have one of these and we just used a fork. Actually, let me set this up here so I'm not shaking you around so much. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut this butter in as best as I can to uh, give us a kind of a sandy light uh, consistency to get that butter incorporated throughout that flour so that they um, become fluffy and uh, flaky. Now, if you don't have butter, you could use shortening like Crisco or something like that, or even lard. <clears throat> I like the butter flavor, so that's why I typically will use the butter most frequently. <clears throat> you could also use margarine. I just like butter the best. So I've got that mostly incorporated there. <clears throat> you can kind of see, you can see little flakes of butter and that's totally fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next thing that I do is I'm going to add our buttermilk into it. And it comes together really, really quickly. Um, just a couple stirs. Like you don't want to, um, mix this too much or knead it too much. See how quickly that comes together? And so now all I'm gonna do is on my counter here, I'm gonna take just a little bit of flour and put it down like that. And I'm just going to empty our contents of the bowl out onto there. And I'm just going to put it all, pull it all together here. Let me move you back a little bit so you can see. And we're just going to, like I said, I don't want to knead it too much. I just want it all to come together <clears throat> really quickly, really easily. Now this recipe I have, I developed, so this is my recipe, uh, using a couple other uh, recipes out there. And this is the main one that I typically stick with. Now there are two other recipes that I use using self-rising flour and then using, there's one called Angel Biscuits that takes yeast and those are good as well. Anyway, so I just flatten it out with my hand. I don't even bring out the rolling pin. Some people like it or they say it works better if you fold it over on itself, they'll rise better. So. I just did that there. And I want this to be, oh, about, you can make it as big as you want. Typically I'll get eight biscuits out of this. So maybe a half inch thick. And I'm gonna take my biscuit cutter. Now you could use um, a cup, you could use um, a ring like to a jar, uh, or a biscuit cutter. And I'm just going to go straight down. And that's what our biscuit's gonna look like. I'm gonna put them into an ungreased baking dish here. And I have my oven preheating to 400 degrees. And these are gonna bake for about, well, 15 to 20 minutes. I typically, I don't often uh, really time, I go by look, but it's about that, about that much. I'm going to re-roll or my dough. When I say re-roll, I'm just flattening it out. So I've got two, four, six biscuits already. And I'm going to get two more uh, and maybe a baby biscuit. Like I said, this typically will give me eight biscuits. Something that else with this recipe that works really well is what I'll do is I'll take these without baking them and 
put them on a cookie sheet and put them in the freezer and then um, take them out and put them in Ziploc bags. These keep really well. When the baby was born, um, I had probably, oh, I don't know, 20, 25 uh, biscuits already made up in the freezer to go. And then you just take them out frozen and put them in the oven and they, it's, it's really nice. Especially if you're tired in the morning and the boys are begging for uh, biscuits and gravy. So here's my baby biscuit. Don't worry, the boys will typically fight over that baby biscuit. And I'll just set it in the middle. So I'm going to put this in the oven at 400 for 15-20 minutes. And let them be golden brown. You could smear a little bit of butter on top now if you want to. Uh, help them brown a little bit. I don't think it needs it. So I'll put this in the oven and I'll bring you back when they're done. Okay, you can see I made extra and so I just put them on the sheet pan and I'm gonna lay this in the freezer and then when they're all frozen, <laughs> Landon just got home from school so it's a little noisy, and I'm just going to stack them in a Ziploc bag. So putting these in the freezer for later meals. Okay, so we got our sausage uh, browning up here for our gravy. And again, I'm, I'm not going to show the recipe for that because this video is getting real long and there's not really a recipe. I'm just going to put a couple tablespoons of flour in there and then milk and salt and pepper. That's really all that I'm going to do. And then here are the biscuits. Oh, you got steamed up. Uh, here are the biscuits coming out of the oven. They took about 20-25 minutes. Look how nice they look. Nice and golden brown. I will show you when we have the sausage gravy to put on top of the biscuit. The La Landon is really excited about this. Right Landon? Thumbs yeah. up. Carter? Sausage gravy and biscuits? Yep. They're, you can see all their snow clothes. And then what, what do you think, Miles? Mustang stew. Sell stew sausage gravy, essa. Mayo, mama, yumeli. He's not going to have sausage gravy, just mama's milk. Okay, so here we go. Get this going, and we'll bring you back. Okay, so we're going to take our nice golden brown biscuit. Look how nice that looks. Open it up. And then take our gravy over here. You can't really see that. But look at there, look at there. Look how pretty that is. I also have some honey and some butter to put on the biscuits. And uh, I'm gonna have eggs because I'm trying to do low carb, but the boys are super excited. Anyway, that's all from the Huddle Haas. Thank you so much for watching and God bless.